we've talked a lot in other videos about looking at mobile data, looking at chat data, all the stuff that we can load in. Let's go over and show how to bring that into FTK so that you can look at that data. So there's a couple different types of data that we support. We support Celebrate UFDR reports, Microsystemation XRY reports. We support raw output from Celebrate, so UFDs. We also support gray shift images and we support iOS backups. Now you might be thinking, who still makes iOS backups? Well, you can if you want, because iTunes is free. And if you have consent phones that you want to work, like phones that you can get the password from, you can download iTunes, then come in and get FTK for, well, if you want the automation for, for 5.9, or you can just get base FTK for 2.9, and you've got a pretty awesome mobile forensic tool for a pretty freaking good price. So you just got to have the password to the iPhone. So iTunes plus FTK is a pretty cheap consent phone option. So we'll show you how to bring that in in this video. All right, so uh, create a new case, give it a name, it's a name, whatever, mobile. Okay, now we have a quick and easy button called mobile processing. You can go ahead and select that and that will turn on most of the things that you're going to need to process any type of mobile device. We're gonna go ahead and click customize to take a look at that real quick. So we're gonna do our search text index so that we can search. We're gonna create some thumbnails for graphics and anything you know pretty much new may be using this HEIC image format, definitely on iPhone, which we'll talk about today, but even some of the higher end Androids are starting to go to this uh, high efficiency image codec. So you'll wanna convert those into JPEG, makes them easier to work with. Another one I might recommend is create thumbnails for videos. Uh, that can make looking at video uh, evidence a lot easier. So if you have a case that is going to use video evidence, that could be a good one for you as well. We're not gonna turn it on for this here. Uh, we've already processed some stuff. We'll, we'll, you know, we're gonna run this like a cooking show and generate system summary because we put some mobile processing into that, but notice it's already turned on and then uh, conversation threading. Within the expansion options, there's a bunch of stuff, you know, Android backups, browser information, etc. iOS backup is selected. I would come in here and just make sure to select SQLite databases. As you know, uh, the vast majority of stuff on mobile devices is SQLite. This will catch anything basically that our external mobile parsers doesn't catch and that'll allow you to view that data there. So we'll go ahead and click OK and click OK. If you don't wanna use that and create your own, like you want to configure your own processing profile, you want to do the bare minimum or something, then the bare minimum you need to have turned on will go into field mode and customize. And again, it's probably easier just to modify mobile processing, but you would come in, you need to select file signature analysis, expand compound files. You need to come into expansion options. Now, depending on, uh, now depending on the type of device you're using, you might need Android backup, but if it's an iOS, you'd need iOS backup. You would need external mobile parsers. You come down iOS backup again, you know, Android or iOS, and then come in and the bare minimum is also zip, but I would also include SQLite and whatever, but we're talking the bare minimum to bring it in. So there we go. And then you would come down again, most likely you would want some graphic stuff. This is why it's just better to use the mobile processing button, but you would also want to generate system summary as well. So uh, the backup options and expansion options in the external mobile parsers, file signature analysis and generate system summary. And that will parse your UFDs, your gray shift images, uh, your iOS or Android backups but again, uh, mobile processing, and then just modify from there. Like if you wanna add SQLite databases or you know whatever else, video processing, et cetera. So at that point, you would go ahead and click okay. You would find yourself in the core view here to add some evidence. Obviously I've already added, but ignore that for right now. We come up to evidence, 
add remove if this box doesn't already pop up. In standalone FTK, this box will automatically pop up. I'm in enterprise, so I need to tell it to pop up. I will click add, and I'm gonna say individual file. Now this goes for UFDs, it goes for gray shift, it also goes for uh, UFDRs and XRY report files. You're gonna use the individual files option, okay? If you're doing an iOS backup, you're gonna do contents of a directory. So, you know, there you go. So we're gonna choose individual file, click okay. Now you can see the UFD here. This is what we would select. Now I already have one in there. We're not gonna take it all the way through, but we will select the UFD file. One thing to be aware of here is that the way that Celebrite outputs this is it creates its UFD, which you can see is just a really tiny file. And then it will have also a zip associated with it. These files need to be the same name. Now coming out of Celebrite, that shouldn't be a problem. But if you're moving these things around, maybe through a cloud drive or copy and paste or whatever the case may be, you want to make sure that the UFD and the zip have the same file name, okay? If, if for some reason these end up being mismatched, FTK will not be able to parse the data correctly, okay? So these need to be named the same, which shouldn't be a problem. Just be aware of that. All you need to select is the UFD. You don't have to worry about selecting the zip. Click open. Uh, this is gonna say, hey, you're adding live evidence. Do you wanna encapsulate it in an 81? We're gonna go ahead and say no, because we're looking at that. Notice it'll drop in. Now, it does not show you the zip here as of the this version, which is 8.0 SP1, but it will read the zip. All you need is to have the UFD in there. For evidence category, it will auto detect. I always just like to explicitly say what it is. It's just, I don't know, peace of mind, but we do have an auto detect option. But if you're, you know, you can go ahead and select iOS. And then we already configured our refinement options. You can go ahead and click okay. At this point, it'll bring it in. And you know, you could look at it in core or you can kick off, of course, the smart view where we will now be able to come through and uh, go to artifacts, notice all our mobile stuff, and then we also put mobile information in the system summary. So knowledge C in here, some calendar information, some browser stuff, but we have chat message and chat conversation and you can come through and take a look at the data. So it's as simple as that. Again, individual file, typically use the mobile processing button because it's gonna give you kind of the, the all-inclusive thing. You don't really have to worry about missing much. And then you can go in and maybe turn on video thumbnails if, if that's something you're interested in. Or you can also turn on SQLite databases or turn off anything you don't want, for example. Now, let's minimize this. We'll close this. And I'll show you how to bring in iOS backups. But before we do that, just know that with a gray key image, you're gonna grab the key file, the key store file, and bring that in instead of the UFD. And then we'll parse the, the associated zip and go from there. So same flow, just obviously the different file. So for an iOS backup, before we look at it in FTK and bringing it in, let's talk a little bit about the structure. Again, it can be created using iTunes or Apple Music on a Mac or whatever. A lot of people probably aren't creating this on their own, but like I said, if you go over to the store, you can basically build a mobile tool with iTunes and FTK for cheaper than any other mobile option out there. You're just limited to consent phones, which, hey, if you can talk the password out of them, which happens quite a bit, you'd be surprised. Uh, you've got a pretty good mobile solution uh, for a really good price. All right. But let's first take a look at the backup structure. So a backup structure is gonna drop into a directory. This, typically the directory will be the UDID of the device. Let's, like this one here, okay? This guy here is an iOS backup as well. It's just a little older. I think this is like iOS 11, so it's quite old. This one's an iOS 17 backup, so we can take a look at that to be kind of modern. I just renamed the directory based on what I got. I didn't have the UDID uh, handy, although I should probably fix that. So within the uh, backup directory, the UDID directory, you'll see all of these types of folders. And 
what these contain are the actual files from the device that have been backed up. The way that Apple stores these backups is it takes this file, whatever this file is, you can see this one's a picture, and it takes the path in the file name and creates a SHA-1 hash of the path in the file name and renames the file as it kicks it out into this directory. All the files in this start with 00, and they're located within the 00 directory. So it organizes them based on the first two letters of their SHA-1 hash file name. Okay, fine, that's great, whatever. Then you come down, you have info.plist. This contains information about the device. Cool. Manifest.db. What is manifest.db? So if we go ahead and we open this, what happens if I double click on it? Perfect. It opens up in my SQLite Studio. If we take a look at this in the files table and we go to data, what we have is we have the file ID or the SHA-1 hash over here. We have the domain that it belongs to. And then we have the file path and file name right here. And so this is how we translate it. This is how a backup is rebuilt. We come in, we say, okay, we found a file. Where's the hash? It's this one. Where does it go? It goes right here and we rebuild this path when we put back a backup. So anyway, manifest.db. So that's how it works. So that means when you bring it into FTK, we have to do content of contents of a directory when we add evidence because we want to bring in what you will have is this UDID directory which I for whatever reason have renamed to that so when we are in FTK we'll come into case and we'll go to new and we would say backup of course you would give it a better name you could use mobile processing again because iOS backup is selected in that however again field mode configure it however you want but mobile processing is probably the easiest way we would click OK and it would load up. Again, we're gonna cheat it and open it up in here. This just prevents me from having six trillion cases. And ignore the fact that we have an iOS backup already in, we've gotta add it. So we're gonna come up to evidence, add, remove. Now remember in FTK standalone, this window will automatically pop up for you. So we're gonna to go to add, contents of a directory, click OK. And then we would navigate out, blah, blah, blah. And notice I would grab this. This would be the UDID directory with the parent directory of all the SHA-1 hashes, okay? Or like, here's a better example, one with actual UDID. We would click OK. It says, do you want to encapsulate this into an 81? It's up to you whether you do or not. With the iOS backups, it's not a bad idea to say yes. We're not going to for this one, so we'll say no. And notice it'll load it in. Our refinement options were set. We'll say this is iOS. Again, it will auto detect, but I just like to set it so that there's no uncertainty there. And then we click OK. And it'll bring it in. And it'll parse it out. If we come over to the mobile data tab, you can see 3,521 items. Of course, we're typically going to review our stuff in SmartView, so we'll go ahead and kick off SmartView. And that's going to load us into our backup here and we can come into artifacts and mobile and we can see our chat conversations, chat message, MMS, SMS, etc. Multimedia for our images and video and system summary for some other information such as browser, browser data, Bluetooth information, so on and so forth. So we can go ahead and review that data here in Smart Review. If you do stick in core, one thing I will point out is because we are duplicating the evidence, because if I click on DD, notice the files are still there because we're not going to move things around. If we come into manifest.db and expand it, we will get the proper structure of the iOS backup. This is what we want to see. This is what we want to look at. Even though it's a child item of manifest.db, realize that these files are not actually located within manifest.db. It's just how we display it in the Explorer. Remember manifest.db is how we translate the files out of here into what we want to see, which is this. So we do hang it off of this uh, manifest.db in the translated values so you can look through them here. So we could go to mobile, library, and come down to like SMS and see SMS.db, which is where all your text messages and iMessages are. 
So if you need to do any, you know, Explorer work, you can be here. But most of the time, again, you'll be reviewing your data over here because we can pop up our chat conversations and go through and view that data. So we have some Instagram stuff here or whatever. Okay, that's the idea. All right, cool. So again, this is how you process mobile data into FTK. If you have any questions, drop them down below. Make sure that you are subscribed to our channels because we post a lot of good stuff. Keep up with it. Uh, make sure you're getting that drip of forensic content. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you in the next video.